message this week. And before I pray over him, just one thing I want to mention that's really helped me in my life when I've been presented with the same thing I've learned, I've heard for years or learned something new. I want to challenge each and every one of you as you hear the message today to do one of or maybe both of these two things. One is don't be so set in your ways that if you've heard something different for a year, 10 years, 50 years, that you put up a wall and don't hear something new. I think there's going to be three things instead of two. A couple of things there. The second thing is everything he says, and I, this does not intimidate this man, check it against God's word. Amen. Check it against God's word. And that relates to the third thing is don't be so intellectually lazy that you accept everything he says just because he says it. Amen. Do that second thing. Test it against the word. And I believe that what God's doing in and through him and you communicating with God the Father, that you will come to a place where you will understand Holy Spirit more and differently than you ever have before. So let's pray. Amen. Father, thank you for this amazing, amazing day. Wow, what a chance we've had to celebrate and do some life together as family. Father, part of that family is having parents. Thank you for Rod and Val as our spiritual parents. Thank you for the privilege and responsibility they have to lead us, to teach us. I thank you for the truths that you've put in his heart and in his mind that are going to come out of his mouth today. Father, be with each one of us. Help us in this process to be more of the men and the women that you've called us to be. In Jesus' name, Yes. amen. 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 Thanks, Joey. Well, we've had church already. Amen. Hallelujah. Morning, Coastal. Very excited about that. Lee Stern, Jamie's mom and dad. It's nice to have you with us. Welcome, welcome. And it's now you're heading out, back up. You don't have to go, you know. You're retired. You can hang out here. You can stay here. Hallelujah. So, not coming through? What's happening? We've got a team. I've got green light here. Are we good? Coming through? Good? Hallelujah. I just want to pray my Holy Spirit has changed on me today. And you'll understand as <laughs> As we get on with that, where is my Holy Spirit gone? My my stand-in Holy Spirit, where is he gone? Joey, where are you? You got to be up here, brother. You got to sit right in that seat there. All right, Jerry Jerry Tilton, uh, as those who know, is uh, he was going to be my Holy Spirit today. In the abundance above all, we could ask or think. And so, Father, we lean on you in this situation. We thank you for a good report. Help Jerry drive safely there in Jesus' name. Amen. That's a very important part of the prayer for Jerry Tilton. He drives safely. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Excited about today. It's nice to be together. Um, uh, it's just so much of confirmation that's happened this morning um, that I would just uh, want you to look out for so that your heart's postured. Um, we're seeing something that's going to manifest that um, we are wanting to see Holy Spirit do more and more as we uh, press in and... Uh, so now my little iPad's refreshing here, so it's going to have to uh, get its act together and wake up because I need to need to speak. So, um, so anyway, Joey, you're my Holy Spirit. And so I, we've been speaking about um, God the Holy Spirit, and it's important that we understand that because it, Jesus said, it's expedient that I go. It's expedient that I go that I would be able to send the Holy Spirit, that the Father would be able to send the Holy Spirit to us so that we would be empowered and helped as uh, we, we go there. So let me reboot this thing. I was speaking about this thing to Scott and Heidi. He said, I had this scary thing that happened to me at the wedding. I put the rings on my iPad and it took all my notes off and that was the end of my notes. So, um, so anyway, we are going to live in hope here. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Speak to me. So why don't I just go on to, I'm going to do a lot from memory today. Um, so I want to just say that um, we are looking for increase and we need to be postured in such a way that we are, 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 are leaning forward in, into Holy Spirit so that we can increase in our area of understanding God, understanding who He is. We understand that Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, it's important that we see that. And then we also need to be able to have the capacity to grow and be more effective as we are in the workplace. And then also we need to uh, be in that place where we're seeing the kingdom of God advance. And so 
as we do that, it's, uh, it's so good that we, we can lean that way. And so we've seen all that happening as we've been leaning forward in that. So I'm going to be talking about something. I asked you a question last time, and it's uh, the last time I spoke. And it says, are we Pentecostal? Are we Pentecostal? May not, uh, wanna, you want to hold up on that, on that, on that slide yet? Um, because I'm not even going with my notes yet at this stage. So uh, we are going to Holy Spirit. We're going to ride Holy Spirit today. We're gonna... Hallelujah. So, ah, I love it when a plan comes together. Let me try my phone. They say, all our spells, try your phone. Your phone could also do the same thing. So, but there's always a first time. Praise the Lord. So, I just got to focus a little better on my little phone. Hallelujah. So I just wanted to say that we spoke on baptism and that we understand that, that um, Holy Spirit baptizes us into the body of Christ. We understand that also that, um, that, uh, that the disciples baptized into water and then more obviously we saw Jesus baptize us in the Holy Spirit as those who journeyed with the Holy Spirit. And so we were in that place where we were um, asking the question and now we wanted to see because we're looking for joyous increase. Hey, I'm a lot more confident when I see my notes in front of me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because why? Because the, the reason is because there's so much miscommunication, misunderstanding, fears, and all these things that have come up with Holy Spirit, and we want to just unbundle it. Because what we saw this morning here, two incidents where we saw the manifestations of Holy Spirit. When that gentleman walks into Home Depot saying, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? And suddenly there's a phone call, something happens, and he buys the exact same thing. Suddenly Danielle gives us a call as she's going for a spinal tap, and she gets to that place and she makes that call and we cry out to God and we stand on behalf of the Holy Spirit. We're starting to see Holy Spirit manifest Himself because if we, can, we can say, listen, Holy Spirit's been sent, Holy Spirit's been sent, but unless we start seeing Holy Spirit manifest Himself in amongst, through us, it's not going to be a little cloud in the sky or little harps and, and, and angels and all that stuff. It's going to be done in and through us because He is co-laboring with us to build the kingdom of God, which requires us to be yielded and hear the voice of God. So here we are wanting to understand that. So here in Corinthians 12, I'm going to pick up an, another aspect of, that, of, of Holy Spirit and ask you another question. And so that question is, are you charismatic? We ask ourselves, are we Pentecostal? And we have all sorts of kind of reactions <laughs> because we've heard of what Pentecostal people do. They kind of swing from chandeliers and they do all sorts of crazy things. And we just also know that Holy Spirit's not weird. We have also know that. And he, he, he kind of, when, when, when uh, 12 volts hits 220 volts, something gives. So there's a whole lot of shaking going on. Power of God. Power of God happens. And so here we see in the very first part of... Uh, do not want you to be ignorant. So Paul is now understanding that I need to clarify with the churches I've walked with that this Holy Spirit needs to be understood and how he's going to manifest himself in amongst the bride so that the kingdom of God may advance. He's come to partner with us and to work with us to do this so that we can not... You see, some translations... Yeah, this is the New King James. It says, I don't want you to be ignorant. Other translations, uninformed. I don't want you to... Be, be misunderstood. That's what it's saying. And so that's what it's, uh, the, the, it's saying that I don't want you to be a misunderstood. I don't, and it's not talking about being stupid. It's just talking about I haven't been taught it. I don't have, I haven't learned how to flow with Holy Spirit. I'm hoping that the combination of what I'm sharing today will help teach us that we would posture ourselves, open our hearts, and be ready for this uh, move and allow the yielding of Holy Spirit through our lives that others may be blessed. So it's going to be exciting to see this. So here it says here, now concerning spiritual gifts, let's just break that down quickly, spiritual gifts. The word spiritual there, it means pneumat pneumaticatus, pneumatic, where we've heard it's empowered by breath, air, or wind. We've heard about pneumatic tools that are run by air and compressed air. And so it's, 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 that, it's, it's done by something we can't see. Can we see breath? Can we see wind? No, we see the results of wind. We see all the results of it. And that's what it talks about, spiritual gifts. And the, the word gift here is, um, is, is a, a favor freely given. 
The Greek word is charisma. And this is where we get this word charismatic from. Charisma. It's this flowing in these gifts that, that, that we want to be able to. The gifts are of grace. The gifts are of the Holy Spirit. And so we're talking about the spiritual gifts. So the spiritual gifts. Are you charismatic? The question. And so when we ask that question is, are we operating? Are we yielding? Are we available so that Holy Spirit may use us and move through us with the gifts? So that others may be blessed and i'm hoping that we'll learn and it goes on it says now concerning and it mentioned six times yes i think six other times in corinthians me you see that is in verse seven so basically he's talking about i've sent you a letter but obviously holy spirit said to me, there's sort of three categories of gifting that comes to the body of christ and i just want to make mention of it the first one is in romans 12 you see that there are motivational gifts and that motivational gifts come by the Holy Spirit. And what I mean by motivational gift is that we each are kind of wired in a certain way to do. I am, I'm a servant. You cut me any which way. I love serving. You've got some people that are administrative. Some people are, are givers. Some are, uh, are encouragers. They just, that's just the natural go-to. That's just the way they're wired. And you're gifted to do that. It's kind of something that just motivates you. And it's called a motivational gift. And Romans 12 unpacks that. And I didn't have time to really do it justice to all the understandings of gifting but i want to give a, a basic overview the other one is romans 12 which is the manifestations gift which i really want us to start walking in and i'm, I'm, I'm going to unpack that today the manifestation gifts and we're going to go through that and then there's obviously ephesians 4 and obviously the manifestation gifts is by the holy spirit ephesians 4 there's ministerial gifts apostles prophets pastors teachers and uh and evangelists and those were given by Jesus that said when he ascended, he gave gifts to the body. And so those gifts are given by Jesus. So those are kind of the three categories. But let's talk about the manifestation gifts because I want you guys to start flying in this stuff. I want you to be all ears, posturing, all ready for this. So I've now, I haven't prompted my Holy Spirit to do as, as well as I did prompt my other Holy Spirit who's now driving down to Miami. But I just wanted to say this. I want to go through, to, to, through Corinthians 12, 7 through 12, and I want to be able to explain it with a demonstration of Holy Spirit doing what He does. And I want us, if we see a visual, maybe we'll posture ourselves and be ready for this. Are you ready for this? Hallelujah. So you might as well grab your basket there. Hallelujah. So it says in Corinthians uh, 12, 7, but the manifestations of the Spirit. Now the Spirit manifests Himself and it's given to each one to profit by all. I want to just say that nobody is disqualified from being able to work and operate and flow in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, in these manifestation gifts. So I don't want you to kind of say, okay, that's, that's for these other guys, these, these elders and these other guys that, that do this often. I, no, no. If you're a brand new Christian, got born again two minutes ago, you're ready for this. Why? Because the Holy Spirit's inhabited you. He makes residence inside you when you give your life to Christ. So it says it's prophets for all. All right, so just, I'm just trying to unscramble some of the doctrinal stuff that you guys have been choked with, which is not biblical. It says here, profitable for all. For to one is given the word of wisdom. So if you can find the word of wisdom, and please, Holy Spirit, give. So you might as well walk with the basket because I'm going to keep flying down the scriptures with it. You hold the basket. Okay. Okay, so Lisa, you got that. All right. So, and it goes on to say, and through the Spirit, to another, the word of knowledge, through the same Spirit. How are you doing? Holy Spirit goes like lightning. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. I'm only joking. I'm only joking. He's being, he's being Spirit-led, okay? Holy Spirit is being spirit led, all right? So, so I've just got to write this down because I've got to make sure my illustration works here. The word of knowledge, through the same Spirit. There wasn't another Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit that gave the word of knowledge also gave the word of wisdom. And to another, faith. By the same Spirit. Okay? Holy Spirit's about to give faith. And while he's busy giving faith, He's also, I'm going to multitask him now. 
And the same spirit, another the gift of healings. Gift of healings coming along. And he's gonna get and he's gonna give it to another the working of miracles. Working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another prophecy. To another the discerning of spirits. I'm giving you a visual. This is what Holy Spirit does. And as we posture ourselves and open ourselves to that, so the discerning of spirits and to another different kinds of tongues. Come on, tongue speaking person, whoever that is. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> to another the, the, the uh, different, uh, yeah, different kinds, uh, the kinds of uh, different kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of tongues. All right, we should have an empty basket. <laughs> but the one and the same spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills I did not instruct Holy Spirit what he did he went around and did what he did because he's under, under, under command because the Father, Son and Holy Spirit work in such great tandem so I want those that have these gifts because I'm going to need you to Get a microphone as, 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 as my Holy Spirit takes the microphone around there. And I'm going to be unpacking this as we go. So you might as well sit in the front seat, sorry. And I will we'll tackle this. I want to just say right up front, we do not have these gifts. These gifts belong to Holy Spirit. And He allows each one of us to operate in it. So suddenly I'm working and there's a gift of healings. Don't walk around and advertise, write a book and say, I have the gift of healings. No. into three groups and there's three in each group and I want to just unpack each one and so the word of knowledge is the first one I want to approach if the microphone could get there but the discerning of spirits is the word of knowledge the word of wisdom and the discerning of spirits and so the first one the word of knowledge if you could open that up Lisa okay word of knowledge Mr. Phil and if you could read out the definition of what that is to know something specific without having learned it by natural means. So there it is. It says to know something specific without having learned it by natural means. Suddenly, there is an understanding of something and you haven't learned it. That's what happens there. Jesus operated in, 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 in mostly all these gifts. And everybody says, well, he's God. No, no. He put, left his divinity and he came down. He has man requiring Holy Spirit to baptize and be baptized by Holy Spirit because the dove came down upon him, Spirit like a dove, and he operated in that. And so when he came to that place he, uh, and needed to operate, and he spoke to the woman at the well. He said to the woman at the well, after much of a conversation and a whole uh, doctrinal conversation, he said, why don't you go and call your husband? And she says, I don't have a husband. He says, you're correct. You've had five and the one you're with is not your husband. <laughs> Now, that's a download. <laughs> download. <laughs> Sorry, so that's a busy lady. Um, that's a word of knowledge. Did Jesus know that? No, it was downloaded by the, by the Holy Spirit. And so we see that in John 4. And Jesus says, you spoke correctly. And he carries on his conversation. The word of wisdom. 
this is a divine answer or solution for a particular question. Born blind. And he answers, and if this man is not from God, he could not do this. He answered with a gift of wisdom to his people that were questioning him. And you see that there. We go on to the next one. And it's here, it's the discerning of spirits. Who says discerning of spirits? Discerning of spirits. Here we have, oi, oi. Discerning of spirits. To be made aware of a demonic spirit. Okay. To be made aware of a demonic spirit. Okay, guys in the West. You've got to hang around in Africa and some of that places in the East and you'll be very aware that there's a whole lot of dem demonic activity. And when we approached a, d a deliverance, uh, a, uh, the guy who headed up the deliverance, deliverance ministry in uh, an Ivory Coast, uh, in, in Dion Rebeer's church, had, uh, had 80,000 people. We said, listen, this, this is needed in, in the third world. And he looked at me and smiled and he said, you've got to realize you've got sophisticated demons in the West. You need to be aware that there is a demonic spirit and there's a demonic thing that are running a lot of things in this country and that we need to be aware of it. And when Paul, in Acts 16, 16, was traveling in the, and a young slave girl followed them and was announcing who they were by the demonic spirit. And Paul did not, did not need a witch to confirm his ministry. He did not need that demonic advertising. So he cast it out caused a hell to play because that was the end of their prophet making things because this, this, this girl kind of was their, 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 their uh, money train. And so we got to understand that. Now this, I want you to clearly listen to this. This is a gift of discerning of spirits. This is not called a gift of discernment. Listen to me. It's clear and it's different. There is nothing in the Bible that says that I have a gift of discernment. You do not have that. This is a discerning of spirits. So when you go and you think that you have this gift, it's not in the Bible, and if you claim to do so, you understand that you're operating in a gift, and a lot of time it's criticism and judgment. And it's pride. Because you have, incorrectly, you don't have this. You need to be discerning, church. You're discerning when somebody's really out to hurt you, rip you off, you need to be discerning and be aware of that happening. So we need to be discerning. But it doesn't mean, hey man, I've got this gift of discernment. No, and then start challenging everything around you because, um, because you feel that you have this, this gift. But if you've got to be aware, understand that the Holy Spirit, and I think you really would like the Holy Spirit to make you aware that there is a demonic force against your family. You would really like Holy Spirit to come and tell you that there is a demonic force that's working in your business and dismantling it. Won't you want that? I would say, Holy Spirit, I'm all open. I'm listening. Give me ears to hear. I wanted to let you know, guys, that are married. Wives are incredible radars. They have this incredible radar that can pick up uh, the discerning of stuff that's happening around and saying, no, this and this. And, and they were, I've seen women wrestle with this, but when the man stands up, he's the artillery that sorts out the demonic. Because, and not to say the women don't, but I'm just saying, in a household, there is a teamwork that Barry says, ah, oh, I don't think so. I mean, I, you know who's also got that? My Holy Spirit that's just driven off to Miami. Man, Jerry has so discerning. He can, he, he can pick up uh, uh, motives of, of demonic stuff, uh, and it's just amazing and surprising. I went to Haiti, and I was there with Dave right in the 97 when Papa Doc was getting asked and and everything is happening there, and... And man, I've never seen so much demonic. I thought Africa I saw it, but man, I never saw so much demonic. We try to get people baptized in the Holy Spirit in this room. There's about 400 people, and over half of them started manifesting demonically. And it took us two hours to settle them down. And there was only one fluorescent light working in the building. And Dave said, I'm going to be here this side with the, with the translator. You go in that side, which was the dark. And I had to go and deal with demons in, that, in the dark side. There were women spinning over 90 degrees all the way to one side of the building, all the way back. You've got to understand. Anyway, I came back, and I was a miserable, miserable when I got back to South Africa. I wasn't back here. I was back in South Africa. And eventually, I phoned our intercessor, Viola. I said, Viola, listen, you've got to pray for me. I'll come back from Haiti, and I'm just a miserable sucker. 
I just, I mean, I just can't get the victory. I'm not, I'm not a depressed person, I'm, and I just can't work it. So she, she just prayed for me there, and then she went off and carried on praying as an intercessor. She came back. She said, did a pastor pray for you while you were there? I said, yeah. He says, he cursed you. Because obviously they're praying cruel, and you don't understand what they're saying. Cursed you. She broke the curse, and I was free. It was a discerning, there was a spirit that, that, that had, oh, a born-again spirit for a person. But I tell you what, when you yield yourself and open yourself, oh yeah, the pastor's going to pray for me. Oh, be careful. I tell you what, the demonic world, I'm not making fear of you. I just want us to be postured in the Holy Spirit so what we can be proactive, active in, in, the, in the workplace and be discerning on this whole thing. So hallelujah. The de declarative uh, gifts, I want to just handle them. Prophecy, tongues, and interpretation of tongues. You love this one. I can see the people that have issues with tongues are very excited about this thing. I want to just talk, talk to you about it. Okay, so there's prophecy. Who's prophecy? Who's prophecy? Okay, Jesus, would you speak back there? <laughs> what does it say, De the definition? A message of encouragement from God through a person. Through a person. So God uses that. God uses that to, 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 through, um, by the Holy Spirit, and you yield yourself, you open yourself up, and you speak in, 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 in a way that, that would uh, encourage. It comes to edify, encourage, and comfort. I want you to know that's the characteristic of prophecy. It comes, it's not come and gives you direction, and it doesn't come here and, and, and gives you authorization to come and speak correction in people's life. No, no. That's not the place of the New Testament prophet. The New Testament prophet comes, you come and encourage, you edify, and you comfort. That's what the Holy Spirit does when he comes with, with prophetically. And it's just amazing how the um, Holy Spirit can come and use all these, in, 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 in a couple of these, all, these gifts all together. And I've seen the function. And I kind of sense that the Holy Spirit gave me this illustration for a very purpose because he does want to give a pro prophetic word at the end of what I'm about to illustrate to you. Because when the Holy Spirit says that there is a mic that lives in Palm Coast, and you all know there's about eight mics that are listening to me. And you think, okay, that's great. That's very general. There's a couple of mics. But this mic lives in a gated community. And this mic lives on a street called Front Street. You think, okay, there's a Front Street and there's a gated community. But I also want to tell you that this, this, this mic lives at 73, 73 Front Street. And this is an example, this is an illustration, because all this information I already know, okay? So Mike, would you stand up? But this is by the Holy Spirit, what God's saying. He says, I want you to know that whatever the enemies try to do to your life, I've come to use it to bring you to people that you ordinarily you would never get to reach. You would never be able to speak to these people that are surrounding you while you're going through this treatment. I've got this treatment under control, and I want you to know that you're, you're my mouthpiece. You're, you're going to be the manifestation of Holy Spirit where you and Sherry are. And that's what he wants to encourage you with. And that is by the Spirit of God, and I didn't have anything else. But that is the mic and the message for mic. And there, there is a combination of, of those who would not know. And I've, I've seen guys at, at the send in the stadium of something like, I don't know, 80,000 people say that there is, this, there is a mic and it lives at the street. And so there's this word of knowledge and so this information. And that's what the manifestation of Holy Spirit is amongst us. And you say, well, I can't do that. You haven't put your ear to the Holy Spirit saying, Holy Spirit, here I am. And why don't you just try, even if you fail? Keep trying. I know this, this Mike, he's not frightened of trying. He'll try and keep trying and keep trying and keep trying. And boy, he'll pray and pray and pray and keep praying. Because that's just, he's, he's just dogmatic about manifesting Holy Spirit. And so anyway, that's prophetically. We spoke prophetically. And it needs to be understood it's for encouragement, for learning. And it's, uh, it's important that uh, people would learn and be encouraged by Holy Spirit. And I wanted to say that John brought a prophetic word last week. 
and it's just quite challenging because now I have to change devices. <laughs> oh my Lord. Okay. But it's so important that you hear that, that prophetic word again because it came up with such a surprise to me and it's just announcing something that, that, that needs to happen. Um, and I just I, I, I took photos, uh, photos, photos of it so I wouldn't have to mess around with it. But this is what it says, a prophetic word for coastal. I'm doing a new thing in your midst. Listen to the encouragement. Uh, what God, Holy Spirit saying, would you say yes and amen and agree with this and posture yourself? At first it will seem, uh, I don't know what that word is. It, it, like it, it, it's not really happening. That's been my interpretation of that word, I think. But the change that are coming when you look back will clearly be obvious. You will not have to strive in this, but you will be a part of an end time increase in awareness of the presence in your midst. You have been a wonderful place for friends, friendship, and comfort, and home for many. And that will continue, continue. but more and more you will, you will long to move but uh, um, uh, you long to have more of my presence and that the awareness will make you long more and more for me. There is a wind gently blowing across the face um, of, the, of this church, Coastal, and expectation is growing and, I'm, and uh, as I increase the spiritual awareness. Be open and willing to change. I am pouring a fresh measure of my spirit upon you if you will receive me. Be willing and ready to receive my presence and I will fill you to overflowing. To, to, to the extent of the measure of your hunger and your thirst for these things, my, uh, 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 things of my spirit the, will be the extent that you drink of my presence. I tell you what, Holy Spirit is, is posturing. He's leaning, saying, come on guys, I'm so for you to be a manifestation of who I am. And so that's a, a, an exciting thing that God is wanting us. So can I just say this one thing about pro prophetic words? If you want to give some prophetic words to somebody, take somebody with you so that it, there's an accountability, so words are not misconstrued because there's always so many conversations, and then uh, um, because it's lives that you're dealing with. I want you to understand that each life that you speak to, saved or unsaved, Jesus paid a high price for that person. Be careful how you speak to them. Be careful how you speak to them. Because they're valuable. Let's talk about tongues. Whose tongues? Hallelujah. Kathy. Lady Kay. A message from God in a language unknown to the person through whom the message comes. Okay. And you understand that. And if you've ever been operating in this world, you speak a, a, a language, a dialect, that you don't really understand what's being communicated. And... Uh, and so I'm going to teach next week. Please, if this is something that really, and you're not sure how to handle, come next week. Because I want to talk to you about tongues. I want to tell you from Bible what tongues is. There are four different uses that we see in the New Testament for tongues. So every, you can't just batch it all together in one, in, in one explanation. You need to see how Holy Spirit uses it. He just totally confounds the, the, the wise and how and in, in what he does so i'm going to talk more about that but i want to tie up tongues and the interpretation of tongues who's got the t uh, tongues and interpretation of tongues all right mr bailey this is the understanding and expressing the thought or the intention of the message in tongues are you, you okay i want you to understand there is a difference between interpreting something and translating something because everybody says, man, that tongue went on for a long time and there's just this short interpretation. Thinking, man, this doesn't weigh up. Yeah, sunshine. The difference is interpretation and translation. Way different. Because you're trying to explain. Interpretation is expressing the thought or the intent of what someone has just said. You're trying to put into words if you came across a spaceship and you were trying to explain that to somebody, why don't we say spaceship and then you've got to try and explain it? Well, it's going to take you a few words 
more. But a translation is a word for word. So that's why you get some Bibles that are translated. And then there is these ones that have an interpretation of what, the, what they're trying to say, what Paul is really trying to say. And so we have those. But it's under, you need to understand that these things are, are different. It's like talking to the young people today. When you're talking to them, they've got this thing, like this. And uh, you say, hey, listen, I, I heard that you went to the, to, to the meeting this week. How did it go? <laughs> I just said a whole lot of stuff. How did they translate it? How did they answer it? Thumbs. Um, how did the test go? You can try to use words, you know. What I'm saying is that um, you have Nathan is different to my other kids. When you ask Nathan about a movie, sit down, get a drink, put back your lazy boy because he's going to give you every texture, every color, expression. And man, it is, it's special because that's what he does. Uh, you'll get a summary from Daniel. <laughs> zip, zip. And Natalie's even more because she's so, so much action, she's off. And uh, you're going to just get that. When I was in Haiti, Haiti, Jed and I may know, because on the spot they say, okay, you're preaching. You can't just preach for 30 minutes there. And they like preaching hour, hour and a half. I don't have, I'm not long-winded. I just get to the point, land the plane, let's go home. That's me. That's me. You're safe with me. Because um, so many preachers saying we're landing. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, hallelujah. It's called, I think it's called a congregational abuse. I just call that that. That's what I call it what it is. I just call it a... And so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pre. And so I, obviously, I, the, the joy of preaching where there's an interpreter, you've got time to think. So you say something, and he says something, or she says something. And you're going, and then suddenly, he takes off. Thinking, heck, I didn't say that much. And he's off. Because suddenly, he just got a revelation of everything I've just said. And now he's going to preach his sermon, and he's now so excited about the point that I've just made. And so he starts. So there's a difference between translation and interpretation. And so when there's a tongues and interpretation of tongues, there is a, 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 like sometimes you'll just have to explain it a little bit more in English and in a, in a known language than there is. So you've got to understand that there is tongues and interpretation. Now, this theological thing where you... First, let me just say this from Paul. 1 Corinthians 14.5. It says, I wish you all spoke with tongues. That's not Paul's preference of saying that to us. That is Holy Spirit saying it through Paul and documenting it. It's I wish. Holy Spirit says, I wish you all pray in tongues. Some of us may need to put that in our pipe and smoke it. And get ready. Huh? Understand. That's what he wants. But Paul went on to write this. He says here in verse 5, he says, I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesy. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks in tongues. And that's where they stop. Hallelujah. And they say, there you are. We don't really need the tongues. Just prophesy. It's better. But it goes on and says, unless indeed he interprets that the church may be uh, receive edification. So it's not a theolo theological thing. It's a grammar thing. Carry on reading. If you can speak in tongues and translate it, it equals prophecy. Hallelujah. Not an issue. And sometimes you, the Holy Spirit requires to have a tongue, an interpretation of tongues. That's what he needs for the, for the situation. So it's not a theological thing. It's a grammar thing. Just read the whole scripture. Uh, okay, let's end with dynamic because I've gone way too long. But hang, we've had fun today. I've had fun. Woo! Okay, the dynamic gifts. I'm hoping to get a response on this. Faith, healing, and miracles. Dynamic gifts, dunamis, dynamite, explosive. You'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. I tell you what, there's going to be a whole lot of shaking going on. When people start laying hands and people hop hopping out of wheelchairs, blind eyes are seeing, deaf ears are hearing. I'm telling you what, then you'll know that the Holy Spirit is manifesting Himself. That's where we're going. That's where we're going. So the gift of faith. Hello. Gift of faith. Boy, Chris. A supernatural impartation of belief and confidence for a specific situation. Man, when you get a gift of faith, suddenly, you just, man, you can say to that mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and there is no doubt in your heart. You just know that you know. And uh, 
And I tell you what, you know that it is wonderful when you pressed against the wall, when you're pressed in a situation, that suddenly you have this gift of faith downloaded to you by the Holy Spirit that would get you to stand up and, 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 and speak to that mountain. I tell you what, a gift of faith is a wonderful thing. I have at times when I just said, okay, we're going to do this. And they say, well, the funds are not there. Or I don't think this is all going to happen. I just know that I know because there's a gift of faith that's happened. And so you operate in it. And so we see that. And so when Peter and John went up to, to, to worship and were past the gate beautiful, and there was that crippled person on the ground there. And you understand that Jesus walked past that very person. But Jesus said, I only do what my father tells me to do. I only say what my father tells me to say. He did not speak to that person and, and call healing to that person. But he, today is the day when John and Peter are walking to go and pray, worship or pray. And they pass that and he's crying out for alms. And, uh, and they say, silver and gold I do not have. But what I do have in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. I tell you what, the gift of faith. And that man went leaping and praising God for the great ruckus at their prayer meeting when you say that hallelujah what a gift plural of healing all right gifts of healing where art thou whoop whoop okay a supernatural endowment of divine health divine health now we've seen these these men that have preached healing the Kenneth Hagans the Oral Roberts we've seen them why because they have had the gift of healing touched their lives. Kenneth Hagin was dying. He had days to live. And he got a, w a word from the Bible from Mark 11. And he, and he just stood on that word and a gift and, and healing came to his body. He raised, raised up, walked out, healed. Oral Roberts dying of tuberculosis. And God says, I'm going to heal you. But the condition is that you preach healing to the rest of humanity. And it did. And he built the university uh, that... He, uh, that uh, my niece, Tanya, she was, she was literally dying of, a, of something that, that she just could not eat. She could not put on weight. My niece was an adopted girl. And we, we, she came together on one Sunday evening and we, we, we prayed and, and God healed her. And she, she's now alive and well. And if you're listening, Tanya, in England, man, your life's been a joy. Hallelujah. I watched Valerie, incurable blood disease, touched with a gift of healings. Healed. My mom, polio for 52 years of her life, dragged her leg, leg skinnier than the other, was pregnant with a whole ton of us on number nine, on number eight of nine. And so, and watched at 52, her polio leg grew out. Gift of healing. I've seen it. I don't doubt it. And so, yes, one may be negative about divine healing until you sick. Then we'll talk. Okay? It's not a bad thing. God heals today. It's not a bad thing. Hallelujah. Okay, work it of miracles. Before I go to work of miracles, can those that are, that are sick, I'd like you to stand. Whatever you call. God says, if we announce this gift of healing, Holy Spirit is here to heal. and you pray for us seeing as you read that gifts of healing however you pray I will yes Heavenly Father we come to you in our time of need when all of our hope has been taken by these physical ailments we know that you're with us in the waiting that's when you make your presence known is in the waiting in the still quiet times when we feel like we're alone and we're just suffering that's when we feel you, and that's when we know you're there. So I pray to you, Father, today that you'll extend your grace and your healing upon all of us here that need it so badly. Ease the pain if it's your gift, and to receive that. Let him ease your pain today. If we just be still in those quiet moments, let those miracles happen today, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Daniel. Hallelujah. Okay, the last one, working of miracles. Whew. This is a divine intervention that alters our natural circumstances. How many of you had a miracle in your life? 
<laughs> is God in the miracle business? Man, he is in the miracle business. He is in the miracle business. When he wakes up in the morning, he says, let there be coffee. He, he doesn't have to come to yes coffee. He just says, let there be coffee. God is continually creating. He is a creator, and that's what he does. That's what he does. That's our dad. That's the Holy Spirit working in and through us. Miracles. He's worked miracles in the Old Testament. He's worked miracles in the New Testament. I want to tell you, miracles is his deal. Salvation is a miracle. So anybody that's come to Christ, understand that you're a new creature in Christ. That's a miracle. That is a miracle. So our hearts need to open up and not resist Holy Spirit because He wants to manifest to a needy dying world all these gifts that I've mentioned. And none of you dis are disqualified from operating in it. Even when you're miserable and in sin, He will still use you. The gifts and callings are without repentance. I tell you what, you yield to the Holy Spirit and uh, do they have to be saved to be touched? No. How many people were saved with Jesus? None of them. They got touched and all were healed. None of them. Some of them didn't even know or would believe in Jesus. But then they were in first in line for healing. First in line to be touched. And so we need to open our hearts to that. We need to arrive in every place we go to. Whether it's our home, our work, our school, our club, our church. Come and say, Holy Spirit, here I am. Give me ears to hear and let me obey. Open your eyes. Listen. Watch. And, and allow the Holy Spirit to operate through you. Suddenly, it'll just well up within you. It's not something that's going to happen here. It's just an unction, an intuition. You just know, man, I kind of sense that I need to say something. You've seen, you've seen Steve McCloskey come up here. You've seen these guys come up here, and they just feel that there's an unction. There's something I ought to say. And it's th that leading. I'd rather fail trying than not try at all. Come on. We need to, we need to practice it. Practice it at the, at the checkout at Walmart. Anywhere. Come on. But can I give you an opportunity before I close in prayer? And musicians, if you could make your way up here, please. I want to just say that this miracle of salvation is available now. You don't have to wait for it tomorrow. You don't have to wait for it any other time. It's available now. And so you may say, well, I've never stepped into that place of knowing Jesus. I never said yes to Jesus. I didn't even know that there was this thing, Jesus, as many I'm discovering don't know about Jesus. Um, and if you just invite him, he has put an, put an invitation out there and said, if you would call on me, would you invite me as to, be, to, to, to be your Lord and Savior? What does that mean to be your leader and forgiver of the sins that I've paid for it? If you Acknowledge it, sign on the line, say, yes, thank you, Father, for, for, for getting my sins paid through Jesus. Um, if you say yes to that, I am legally allowed to come in and take habitation in your life and walk with you in relationship. And, uh, and as we belong to him, we'll start believing in him more and more. Amen? That's what happens. So if that, 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 that's a miracle available to anybody. Right here, right now, those that are listening on, on, on live stream, can I pray for you? Can we pray as a church out loud? And as you pray out loud, just invite Jesus into your life. Say, Jesus, whew, come and take the wheel. Hallelujah. Right. Jesus, I thank you that you're the Son of God. That you died on that cross for me. You paid for my sins. I RSVP. The invitation to be your son, to be your daughter. I give my life to you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You prayed that prayer. Grab another connection card if you already pulled one out. Grab another one right out. Say, I prayed that. Drop it off at the, at the counter. I want to connect with you. I want to pray with you. I want to get you a Bible. I want to give you everything I can to tell you, man, you've just joined an incredible family that loves you and Jesus loves you. It's just wonderful. He did that. He did that. I hope you heard something today. I hope that you would avail yourself to Holy Spirit and be open to be one of those that would manifest the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Don't miss next Sunday. Next Sunday is going to be information.
use, you can use for the kingdom of God. For the kingdom of God. And allow the musicians to close us with a song. And then I'll leave it to Joey. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for doing what you did today. <laughs> Appreciate that. I hope that illustration makes it clear that Holy Spirit's moving here. And if you could say, yes, use me, Lord. Yes, use me, Lord. Yes, use me, Lord. Even in the workplace, use me, Lord. Use me. Woo! And then we're going to use this pulpit on Sunday to testify what God has done with you through the week. That is where I want to go with this. Those testimonies will preach a sermon better than I could or anybody else could preach. That's what I want to see. Kingdom in the workplace. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. For all my technical challenges and your patience.